Hi everyone. Um, as I've mentioned many times in the past, um, this anti-Semitic slur against Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party is pathetic. Um, and I've, I'll show this graph. I've showed it before. Um, anti-Semitism in the Labour Party is actually less than racism in the Conservative Party. Racism in the Conservative Party is higher than the alleged anti-Semitism in the in the uh, Labour Party. So, obviously, smearing and slurring and constantly bringing up anti-Semitism and not bringing up the racism in the Tory Party, which happens all the time. There's uh, been instances recently of it. They never make a big deal out of that, but they'll make a big deal out of the uh, anti-Semitism. And the worst is the BBC. They really are. They, they, they will jump on anything Corbyn anti-Semitic related, related. So I saw this um, day before yesterday in the Canary. I was going to do a video on it yesterday, but uh, I didn't have time. And uh, to be honest, I'm glad I didn't because there's an update to it today. So this is the headline in the Canary. Corbyn receives a huge boost from 36 Jewish groups worldwide, embarrassing the media. Okay, so the article says this. I'm not going to read all the article. Um, but I just want to give you an outline of, of basically what the uh, what the headline means. So Jeremy Corbyn has received a major boost from 36 gr uh, Jewish groups worldwide, embarrassing the corporate media. The Labour leader is currently under pressure from the press, the right of his party and the Conservative Board of Deputies of British Jews. They are pushing for Labour to adopt wholesale the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance is definition of anti-Semitism into its rule book. Okay. On the 17th of July, 36 Jewish groups from around the world said that the IHRA definition intentionally equates legitimate criticisms of Israel with anti-Semitism. And later in the day, Labour's ruling body approved a new code of conduct that included a version of the IHRA definition without the examples that could stifle legit legitimate criticism of Israel. The Labour leadership claims to have expanded on the IHRA definition, also giving new examples. So this is good. You don't want to uh, issue a code of conduct that stops any criticism of Israel, especially since, and I'm going to cover this in another video, especially since today I see this. This headline basically, it's, it's confirmed now. Israel has confirmed itself as an apartheid state. So you don't want anything in your code of conduct that stops any criticism of that or makes any criticism of that classed as anti-Semitism. And I've brought this up many, many times in the past. Criticism of Israel is not automatically anti-Semitic, but that's what Israelis and Netanyahu, that's what they want. I say Israelis, the Israeli government and Netanyahu. That's what they want. They want to be able to be above criticism and they want any criticism of them to immediately be called anti-Semitic. So the article continues on this. BBC political en um, editor Laura Kunzberg, so close to calling her what I usually call her then, to play on their last name, I'm sure you can imagine what it is, suggested Labour's decision had let down the Jewish community. Hmm. Wow. And the Guardian's Jonathan Friedland said Labour decided it knows better than every mainstream Jewish organisation in the UK. <clears throat> but now, for the first time, 36 Jewish groups, including six based in the UK, have come together in a move that strengthens the position of Corbyn and organisations that support Palestinian rights. Their statement says the IHRA definition is worded in such a way as quote, to intentionally equate legitimate criticisms of Israel and advocacy for Palestinian rights with anti-Semitism as a means to suppress the former. Basically, that has just framed what I, I said. 
Spearheaded by the US-based Jewish Voice for, for Peace, the groups continued. This conflation undermines both the Palestinian struggle for freedom, justice and equality, and the global struggle against anti-Semitism. It also serves as a, a shield, it serves to shield Israel from being held accountable to universal standards of human rights and international law. Remember, this is 36 Jewish groups around the world that are saying this. Okay, we urge our governments, mun mun municipalities, universities and other institutions to reject the IHRA definition and instead take effective measures to defeat white supremacist nationalist hate and violence and to end complicity in Israel's human rights violations. Israel does not represent us and cannot speak for us when com committing crimes against Palestinians and denying their UN stipulated rights. So this is 36 groups around the world that have congratulated Corbyn and Labour for doing this. So I thought it's going to be interesting this is to see how the BBC who are constantly smearing him in articles relating Labour and Corbyn with anti-Semitism like I say even though anti-Semitism in the Labour Party is far less than Conservatives in the Conservative Party they just concentrate on, on it's just unfair it's unbalanced it's biased let's face it it's just biased well what do you expect from the BBC they are biased they say they're not but they clearly are because look at this this is what they've written about Jeremy Corbyn and anti-semitism since that article in the Canary has come out since it's come out that 36 Jewish groups around the world have piled on on uh, Jeremy Corbyn and, and said congratulations we support you in this this is what they've written first one chief rabbi warns labor over anti-semitism Ephraim Mervis says Labour is uh, sending an unprecedented message of contempt to the Jewish community. Next one, new Labour anti-Semitism code criticised. Labour officially adopts a new code of conduct, but it is con condemned by Jewish groups and some Labour MPs. And then the most recent one, Labour takes action against MP Hodge. Dan Margaret Hodge is reported to have called Jeremy Corbyn anti-Semitic. She didn't actually. <laughs> she was... She flat out in his face called him an effing anti-Semite. Do you think in any of those three articles they mention these 36 groups around the world that are supporting Corbyn's stance on this? These 36 Jewish groups, do you think they've mentioned it at all? Because I read every single one of them. They did not mention it at all. Not a single sentence. None. I am really, I've, I've, I spend a lot of my time criticising the BBC and the more I do it and the more I investigate it, the more instances I am finding of, the, uh, of this bias. It's flat out bias is what it is. And it's curious, I'm curious as to why in the last few days this anti-Semitism stuff has just suddenly come up again. It's almost as if, I don't know, they're scared because Labour has a five point, po uh, point lead in the polls now, according to YouGov. Look how UKIP has risen. That was 1% not long ago, UKIP. 1 or 2%. They've risen to 7%. Conservatives lost pretty much 15% of their, their support since that white paper on Brexit came out. And UKIP's risen from the dead. They've got a five point lead in the polls now, Labour, and all of a sudden, articles of anti-Semitism, they suddenly come out. And if you think, if you think, and I know that there's a possibility some people out there will think, oh Gordon, come on, it is a story that they're, they're not covering these 36 groups. They haven't mentioned them at all that are supporting Corbyn. They've just picked on one or two instances of people who are attacking him. Not covering at all. And then I noticed this today on Twitter. This is Sajid Javid. This is our Home Secretary. And he replied to somebody who said a Holocaust denying statement. He replied with this. How can you even question the Holocaust? Please think carefully about what you are saying. Don't be misled by Corbyn. That is the Home Secretary 
blatantly implying that Corbyn is a Holocaust denier. Blatantly. There is no other way you can construe what he's just, done, uh, just said. None. Do you think that the BBC will be covering that with the same vigour that they cover any stories of anti-Semitism uh, with, with uh, Jeremy Corbyn? Do you think they will? Do you think they will do a, a front page on the, on the BBC website? Will it be the first uh, item on the six o'clock news tonight? No, of course it won't. I doubt. I highly doubt it will hardly get a mention anywhere on the BBC. Anywhere. They are scared, is what they are. They are scared because he's leading in the polls now, and because Theresa May is pretty much on her last legs. We know that she's going to go very soon. We know. They are scared. And this is blatant bias by the BBC. Blatant. And I, for one, am frigging fed up of it. If you enjoyed this video, please click the bell down there and subscribe um, so you get a notification of next time I drop a video. Also, I can't do this without your help, so if you can afford it and you enjoy my videos, please support the channel by uh, subscribing to my Patreon. Link is down there. You can do it for as little as $1 a month, and it really does help. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Please share my work and talk to other people about uh, the issues that I bring up. Thanks very much for your support. Until next time, peace and take care.